Hey everybody, welcome to this recap of the fight week two. Today we talked about the weapons that we fight with. This whole series we're looking at the fight for your life. So let me just give you a quick overview. We, every warrior, every fighter, they have to prepare for battle. They understand who the enemy is, where the battle's at, how it's fought. They make sure they know how to use the equipment at their disposal. They make sure that they have their postures down right, and they're ready to win. Uh, today, we start off by looking, what is it that our fight is? We go through life struggling with all kinds of things, and uh, as long as we live, we have battles that we face. So we looked at what Paul taught us, that our fight isn't with flesh and blood. Our fight is isn't with people. There's a whole nother word, world that, that doesn't meet the eye, that we don't see. And uh, Paul talks about how our weapons are not of this world. You see, if our fight isn't physical, if our fight isn't with people, we don't use the traditional weapons. We don't use our fists. We don't use our words because that's not our fight. Our fight's not with people. There's a whole spirit world, a supernatural world, where angels and demons are at war fighting for our lives, for our hearts and our soul. Satan is the enemy of our soul. And we looked at what he does, how he came to kill, steal, and destroy. When we stand up and fight, we're fighting against his forces. But you know what? We don't fight alone. We do not fight alone. God sends his angels to fight on our behalf when we ask him. This battle isn't flesh and blood. It's not with people, but it's against the forces of Satan himself. Now, that sounds a little freaky. I get it, right? It's like this whole world going on. But you know what? Here's the thing. We've won the victory already. But, you know, Paul instructs us to stand firm. So when we understand who we're fighting and what we're fighting, we know then how to fight the battle. In uh, Ephesians 6, Paul goes through the armor of God. That's our equipment. That's our weapons. That's our tools to use in this battle. The belt of truth. It fastens it all together. We've got to know what we believe, why we believe it. That's so important in this battle that we're in, that we understand truth. Then we looked at the breastplate of righteousness. Our heart's deceitful, and Satan wants to get at our hearts. But we guard our hearts through righteousness. Righteousness is right standing before God. And when we seek to live a life that's right standing before God and our behaviors line up with his word, we're guarding our heart against what Satan and his forces want to lob against us. Next, we looked at the shoes, the gospel of peace. Every fighter needs to have that cool, calm, and collectiveness going into the fight. And we understand the gospel of Jesus, and we've applied that to our life. In this fight, it gives us the peace that we need as we go out and fight. Then we've got the uh, shield of faith. See, Satan's always taking shots at us, flaming arrows and darts and just lobbing it our way. And it's easy to get tripped up and caught off guard and off balance because he's lobbing this up. But when we have faith and trust in God, it becomes a shield that deflects all that he's trying to flow and throw against us. The next thing is our helmet of salvation. When we have a relationship with Jesus, there is no such thing as a headshot because it protects us against that. The last thing is the sword of the Spirit. We have a great defense with all this stuff, but you know what? We get to punch back. When Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted by Satan, he punched back using the word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. So when Satan comes on the attack, we can go on the offense because greater is he than is in us than he that is in the world. We can stand on his promises. We can stand on his, on his word and we can punch back using that sword of the spirit. So as we look at the equipment at our disposal, we've got to put on the full armor of God as Paul talks about. You need to evaluate your life. Are you putting on that armor? Are you growing in that? Are you training so that you can win? Or are you just neglecting the tools that you have in front of you? The second thing we got to do then Got the equipment down. Then we need to get our posture and our stance right. We got to get in the right position. When uh, we get in the right position, we know we're in that position because our knees hit the ground. We humble ourselves before God and we pray and we ask that he comes, that he does battle on before us. Just like Daniel got on his knees before God and he dispatched his angels in battle for him. 
we need our knees to hit the ground. If we want the right equipment, we've got to pair it with the right position. We've got to seek God's face and pray. Your prayers matter and they are powerful. If we want to win this fight, if we want to stand firm as Paul instructs us, we've got to put on the armor of God and then we've got to get in the right position. But here's the great news. If Jesus is Lord of your life, if he's living in you, we've won. You've won. When Jesus took on the cross and he said, it is finished, he meant it is finished and the victory was won. He raised three days later with victory over hell, death, and the grave. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. When we fight from victory, it changes everything. We've got to stand firm. We've got to stand firm and we can do that because of his victory, because he has won. If you want to fight victoriously in your life, if you want to fight victorious against the weapons formed against you, you need the right equipment and the right position, and then you stand firm because you have the victory. So in closing, evaluate where you're at. First of all, do you have a relationship with Jesus? That's first and foremost. The victory is not yours until you accept it. If you haven't done so already, invite Jesus into your life. Secondly, evaluate, are you growing in your walk with God? Are you growing and putting on the armor of God? Look in in Ephesians chapter 6, go through it and pray through it and say, hey God, am I doing what I need to do to be prepared to stand firm? Secondly, get on your knees. Start seeking God in prayer. If uh, If you have a stale prayer life right now, Go, go to your bedroom, go to your prayer closet, go in the, while you're driving in the car. Start pouring out your heart before God and develop that. Get the right equipment, get in the right position, and stand firm in victory. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.